So, the theme of today's video is, um, the lack of game modes. And I'm gonna say right off the bat, if you do not want to hear me rant on about a DLC that you may or may not like, uh, leave now, I'm gonna be complaining a lot in this video. And I don't normally do that about Star Wars Battlefront, but I am gonna do that in this video. So, as I said a few seconds ago, the theme of today's video is the lack of game modes, which has very sadly plagued the Death Star DLC that had launched last week, Tuesday, and obviously you guys know here on the channel we cover everything uh, fully in depth, we make sure we don't miss anything out, and you're probably wondering to yourself, well, you know, why are you talking about all this now when you still have yet to record the new uh, Briar Pistol, you have not recorded any Ultra D2 gameplay, you have not recorded any gameplay with the new Red 5X Wing or the TIE Advanced, um, you know, what's the deal? And it's as simple as the lack of game modes has made recording this DLC almost virtually impossible. And I'm I'm not kidding when I tell you that. Like, when you play Star Wars Battlefront's Death Star DLC, 75% of the matches you play, you're going to be in a, a fighter flying through this space. Which is okay, but there's also a lack of infantry game modes. And every now and then, I want to be an infantry soldier shooting at people. After all, the K or the TL-50 Repeater, which is one of the best weapons in the game, um, I love using that gun, and I cannot use it as much as I like to because I'm constantly flying around, and I'd like to be able to use... Um, yeah, I'd like to be able to use uh, an infantry game mode for once. But um, it's just frustrating from a YouTuber standpoint that you know I spend a lot of time um, recording and trying to unlock shit, and I find myself trying to literally um it's just and some of the unlocks are actually ridiculous like for the um k16 briar pistol 25 kills with han solo when he's not even the go-to hero in this game like bruh why i actually i actually do not understand i really don't um i guess you know they just them oh shit this guy's later i guess it's just them saying oh you know but they should have had it, like, because obviously, sometimes, you know, the heroes in the games, you know, they, uh, they take it, they actually do stuff. And, um, sure. you know, it would make sense for the hero in the game to have that unlockable for them. And, uh, unfortunately, uh, you have, I think Chewie does something unlock-wise, but there's nothing for Bosk at all. Actually, no, neither of them. I, either Chewie or Bosk should be the ones that are... You have to get 25 kills with. I don't know why Han Solo is. Uh, maybe it's because the broad pistol is a pistol, and you know he um, Han Solo uses the pistol. That could be the reason why. But I don't think it makes sense to have Han Solo be the guy to get killed with when you know you should definitely have Chewbacca or Boss to be the ones to get kills with, especially since they're the main heroes you're gonna be using in this game. I don't know, but um. I'm actually going to sit in this room for a minute and show you guys the easter egg. There's actually an easter egg in this room. Um, it's the, the Junk Monster from, uh, um, the Star Wars trilogy. He comes out of the water. I, I think he comes out of... I don't know where he comes out of. But he just pops his head out for a little second. So I'm just going to talk for a minute while I'm chilling out in this room for you guys. Actually, I'm going to die because there's a zero in here. Yeah, boss, of course. Of course. Anyway, though. Um, so actually, and as sadly as it is, guys, this is our DLC review, too. I know this is not much review, this is much more of me of a rant, but I just, I can't take it anymore. It's driving me nuts not being able to record anything, I'm wasting time, so I thought to myself, you know what? Um, I drove the DLC on my own, I recorded quite a bit for you guys, and I'm just gonna finish wrapped up today and move on from now. I don't want to spend... I'm just wasting so much time trying to lock this shit that's never gonna get locked anytime soon, and I don't want to keep uh, wasting my time so let's just get into it so maps wise it's kind of weirdly weird how the maps work we have three distinct death star maps command sector power center defense sector and then you have two fire squadron maps including the trench run um or the fire squadron map which is um the death star surface same thing as the trench run really or you have the um imperial blockade which is the first initial starting point for the battle station game mode where you're flying around two imperial star destroyers basically trying to destroy them and then um you're also you know flying in and out of uh floating space debris and which is 
Um, I'll be honest, the visuals in this map, and I'll get into the visuals real fast just because, you know, why not? The visuals in this game are 10 out of 10 like usual. One thing DICE has always been good with in her lifetime is making good visuals. The, the, oh my god, dude, the, the Imperial Blockade map, oh my god, it looks so beautiful. You know, flying in and out of those, it looks so good. The, um, the planets in the background, oh my god, I... I first spawned into that and was like, holy shit, this is beautiful. I had to, like, take a thumbnail of it. Like, even this here, like, like this planet with, like, the ring around it, and it actually rotates, too. Oh, my God, that's so beautiful. Anyway, though, that's the real problem. So, we got into the lack of game modes. That is a huge problem with this DLC, because I, I said before, it's a fucking YouTuber's nightmare trying to record right now. At least for me, it is. Trying to get actually anything unlocked. I'm surprised I was able to get where, where I could have with Chewie and Boss. Unfortunately, obviously, you guys saw I had to go back on, um... I had to go back to Heroes vs. Villains to get bosses just because it's virtually impossible. That's the I find myself boss. stuck into this game mode where I, like, I can never actually, like, play as the Imperials anymore. Like, I don't know why. Like, I had, like, a seven-game streak as the Rebels, and it was starting to get annoying. Like, I wanted to change up, but it is now it's cool to see. Um, anywho, though, so... Uh, those maps, the three Death Star maps are kind of a little bit sad because they're really all, they're all similar and it's a little bit annoying. Um, I think we're playing Defense Sector right now. And, um, they're all very similar in their own way. Like, there's a couple of distinct features on the sides of the maps that, you know, you could, you could tell the difference. But for the most part, they're all very similar. They're all, um... You know, they, they play the same route, there's, you know, one big quarter in the middle, which is side areas. And it's almost like they just took the same three maps, added a few different things in, and then, you know, I don't know. I'm not feeling it with the infantry maps. And then obviously the two space maps are pretty different, because you have the trench run the Death Star service, which is the most iconic thing. One of the most iconic um, things in Star Wars history. And then you got um, the Imperial Blockade, which is just awesome. If I could be honest, as much as it annoying is fucking go doing the um, fire squadron like ten times, like in the course of the night, because I can't play anything else. Um, the the fire squadron maps are definitely there's more heart and soul part than those than it was the um, uh, the the actual infantry maps themselves. I, I know people are gonna say like, oh, like you know, you don't know how much time they spend in them. They probably put a lot of effort in or you just you just destroying them. Guys, I'm not destroying DICE on purpose. I really like DICE. I think they make phenomenal games, but it just feels like this DLC um, was not uh, was not put together the right way. I would have liked to have, I know they can only have so many maps in the game. I would like to have saw more maps actually in the Death Star themselves since this is such a big goddamn planet. But anywho though, moving on. The TL-50 repeater, if you guys know, is absolutely destructive as shit. You have two fire modes, you have this incredibly fast uh, fire rate, which takes forever to actually overheat, by the way. And then you have uh, this big-ass um, charging shot right here. See if I can get a guy for you guys. Get that droid moving again before reinforcement. Oh, I got him. No shit. You're right, mate. Um, yeah, that's the charge shot. And if you hit a uh, group of enemies, it is absolutely... Uh, it absolutely goes ham. We have the medical droid, which is, you know, it is very, literally self-explanatory. Can I play this R2-D2? Oh, God, no. Um, it is very self-explanatory, guys. It, you literally just put it down, and it'll hear people for a certain period of time. It does not move. It's stationary, unfortunately. Um, and then you have the trip mine, which is, again, self-explanatory. You literally just put it down, and somewhere the new it explodes. Just, you know, your typical mine. Nothing special there. Um, where else? Uh, Chewy. I played one game with Chewie, but from what I know, Chewie is, you know, very good. He's, he's Chewbacca, so they better be. The ground slam, I don't, I haven't entirely experienced the ground slam from my south face. I don't entirely know how lethal it is. The boatcaster is very lethal, and the Wookiee roar, um, I'm not entirely sure how that works. Uh, Bosk is incredibly deadly. The grenade launcher that just keeps going, that is absolutely crazy. Like, it is so destructive. Um, the Diaxes grenade is really helpful when you're in a really big group area and you can just get out in a hurry, like, and then, um, obviously the, um, infrared sense is, uh, really convenient for when you have a lot of guys surrounding you and you can't see them all. So, you know, Bosco, Bosco and Chewie are definitely very good characters, and I would recommend them. But, uh, I'm not gonna talk much more, guys, in this DLC because, um, I don't want to bore you the fuck out of you guys. I would, I want to go ahead and apologize again for just the lack of not getting as much coverage of this as I would like to. Obviously, I missed the TIE Advance, I missed um, the Red 5 X-Wing, I missed the K-16 Briar Pistol, and I also missed uh, R2-D2. 
um, which is unfortunate. I actually would like to get inside of him real fast. I'm gonna try to get inside of him for you guys, for you guys real quick fast. Let's get that droid moving and get to the hangar. But these guys are holding this off really well. I don't think this is gonna happen. But anywho, yeah. So my final thoughts on this DLC. As always, like a dice DLC, it is visually stunning. It captures the true heart of the Death Star and the outside um, planets surrounding it. They look beautiful. However, the lack of game modes has really plagued the DLC. And it has almost made it not fun for me trying to record. I usually really enjoyed recording these DLC coverages for you guys. But, um, I know I kind of just took a shortcut with these. Not even showing you either of the maps either. But you guys have played these DLC maps. You guys know what you're looking at. So, um, my apologies again for the just overall laziness of the coverage here, but I'm sure you guys will understand with the lack of game modes how hard it can be to truly get everything unlocked. And R2-D2 is hard as fuck to play because everyone's going after him and it's virtually impossible to get the TIE Vance and the Red 5 X-Wing. But enough talk for today, boys. Stay tuned tomorrow for a brand new video. I have no idea what that's going to be, but I'll figure it out as I enjoy the rest of my day off today. And, uh, yeah, have a good one, guys. See you later.